Hi, this is Tanner from Smart Fantasy Baseball, and today I'm going to show you a method that you can use to try to identify breakout pitchers. And to do that, I'm going to use PitchFX data from Fangrass to try to identify players who have either added a new pitch or changed their pitch mix from last year. Uh, I wrote a couple of articles this year, one about Max Scherzer and one about Edward Mujica, who both added new pitches or began changing their pitch mix dramatically, and this has led to a big increase in their results. Uh, so this will be a method we can use to try to find more players that fit into that boat. So to do that, I'm going to go over to Fangraphs, the pitching leaders for 2013, and the report initially comes in with qualified pitchers, so that's some minimum innings pitch threshold that I don't really want. I'm going to just set that a little bit lower than what it's probably at. I don't really want relievers or anything, but uh, newer starters, I want to capture them in my analysis. So I'll change that to 40 innings pitched. And then if I go to the pitch FX pitch type data, you can see that we've got the list of all the pitchers here and the percentage of pitches that they've thrown. So I'll export that. And then I'm going to also go do the same thing for 2012. And export that. So then in my download folder, the first file that would have come out it's going to be 2012 or uh, 2013, and I need to combine these files. So I'll also open up 2012, and I now have to right-click and move that over into the first file. And I need to name these properly. So this one here is 2012, and this is 2013. Now one of the things that makes the data a little bit more difficult to deal with is that when it comes out uh, of fan graphs, there's actually a space in all of these blank fields. So if they didn't throw a particular pitch, rather than it being a zero, it's got a space in here, and we need to try to remove that. So to do that, I'm going to do a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to pick in the first fastball percentage category here. I'm going to pick that cell and then hit Control shift end to bring me down to the bottom here. And now I'm going to do a Control f to search here. I want to actually replace. And I want to find a space, and I want to replace it with nothing. So let me see if this looks like it's working. It does, so I will replace all of these. And then I'll jump over to the other tab. And do the same, control shift end, find, it's got my space in there, so I'll replace those. Okay, and now I need to do a comparison between these two. So I'm going to add a new sheet and call it difference. And I'm going to set this up so that it will then go and look at the other two tabs. And in order to use the lookup in Excel, I'm going to be using a VLOOKUP. That function in Excel looks in the first column of a table, and then we'll scroll across to pull a column that you want. So basically we would tell it, go find Tony Singrani's player ID, and then pull the fifth column to get his fastball percentage. But in order for this to work, we need the player ID to be in the first column. So I'm going to just move that over in both of these. Insert it. And I'm also going to copy it because I want that to be... Um, I'm going to copy the 2013 player IDs and paste those here. So then now I can start my lookup. 
and that's going to be the VLOOKUP formula. And the way that this works is the first thing you have to tell it is what to look up. So we want it to look up the player ID and then the table array, which means which area or table do we want it to look at. So the first thing I'm going to look at is in 2013. Pick the first cell here and then again another that same keyboard shortcut we used earlier, Control shift n will jump down to the lower right hand corner of that table and I'll hit a comma to choose that. So now it's looking for column index number and this is which just a numeric representation of the column you want it to pull from. So I want name to pull from here so I want, that's the second column, one, two. And then the last part here, range lookup is optional, but what it, what happens here if you leave this blank, I believe is it tr chooses true, which would go and find an approximate match. So an example of what that might do is, it, you might tell it to go look for player ID 12555 for Singrani. But if you choose true, true, Excel will find an approximate match. So it might find 12556 and pull over data for whoever that picture might be. So, and that would give us misleading results. So we definitely want only exact matches. So I'll hit enter here. And you can see that it went over and it found that. Now, uh, the other thing we want to go look at then is fastball percentage for 2013. And Excel has a neat trick that this little black box here, if you drag this around, it will um, find the data for you. But take a note, or it'll copy that formula and adjust it automatically for you. But look at this formula here. So it's looking in A1 through S163, which was our set of data. If you move that, it starts to adjust these formulas for you, which is not really what we want. We don't want it to go find Singrani's name. We still want to keep using our player IDs. So to do fix this problem, we have to change these to be absolute references, uh, is what it's called to an Excel. And to do that, you have to put a dollar sign in front of the term that you don't want to change. So if we use this example, if there's a dollar sign in front of the A, as this is dragged over, that will stay looking at column A. So we want to freeze column A, and we also want to freeze the entire player pool that we have here. Put a dollar sign in front of the column and the row, because the block of players over here is not going to move. It's a fixed thing. So as I move formulas around in here, that player listing is not moving. So now if I move this over, the fastball percentage is not in column two, so we have to go and figure out what that is. So that's column one, two, three, four, five is fastball percentage. And 82.8%, we can see that that is in fact what the table shows. So now we'll also do 2012. And again, that's VLOOKUP, but now we are going to tell it to go look in the 2012 data. So the table is going to be over here. I'll pick the first one, Control shift end comma, and again, that's the fifth column in these, and we want false. Okay, so it's not finding anything for Singrani, which may not be an issue because I believe he's a rookie so he's he's not in here so it's not an error that in the formula it's just definitely not finding it but let's go ahead and move some of these to see if this makes sense so yeah we have some other pictures that I think are either rookies or were injured that probably are not showing up in our 2012 data. So that seems correct to me. And again, now remember, we're trying to locate the difference in pitch mix. So we could go through and do this for every single pitch type. 
but that becomes quite an exhausting exercise. And really we can probably understand if someone has changed their mix just by looking at the fastball because the fastball is the most commonly thrown pitch. So if it's going to decrease from the pride from 2012 into 2013, that probably indicates there's some new pitch or significant change in the existing pitches going on here. So to calculate a difference, I'll take the 2013 minus the 2012 amount and copy that down. And now to really focus in on those players, I'll go over to the data sort and I want to sort by the difference. and see here. So these are the pitchers that threw fastball at a certain amount in 2012 and now we're comparing it to 2013. And there's some names in here that look interesting to me. So David Phelps or Homer Bailey. Then now that we've identified them, this doesn't necessarily mean uh, that they're guaranteed to have a breakout. We need to do a little bit more looking, but now we know who to look at. So Homer Bailey here is someone that I might be interested in looking up. So the site I like to look up the players in now is Brooks Baseball. So if I go over here and look up Homer Bailey, and his pitcher card. The location to look at that is the usage and outcomes page. And this gives you a graphical look at the pitch mix. So it's got the different types of pitches over here and you can see on the graph how they've changed over time. So you can see over the course of his career his fastball is decreasing. And now I'll look more closely at the current year to see if there's a change that jumps out at me. So the red is decreasing. Oh look, this pitch is increasing greatly. The split finger. Oh, and also a sinker. That he's thrown a lot more than in the past. That's the gray pitch. He's decreasing his use during 2013, but it's definitely still higher than it's ever been. And if you want to look at more closely at the actual numbers, you can come down into the tables to see that. So yes, you can see that the split finger got used a lot, and the four seam has dropped a lot. So in the past, it's been in the 50, mid 50% 50 range, and this year it's in the 30s, maybe in the 40s on average, but still down. And you can see the sinker is what's jumped up a lot. So it, maybe 10% last year, and now we're looking at something in the 20s. And then now we could go look also in here at the sinker and see um, what kind of results he's getting on that. But there's a definite thing to keep in mind here, a disclaimer to put on the pitch classification and how it works. So I'm definitely not a pitch FX expert, but from what I gather, the classifications of pitches can change from year to year and also in season as a player moves from one ballpark to another if they're visiting or at their home park because the camera systems are calibrated certain ways in one stadium versus another. Uh, a lot of the classifications is done by computer algorithms that guesses that this is a fastball or this is a curve and what could be happening is just that certain pitches are getting classified differently even though they're technically the same pitch. But it's something to look at and we can go look at the sinker and see how it's behaving. How well does he do on the sinker? Does he, does he get a lot of swing and misses or is it getting hit hard? And in that case maybe we don't care so much about Bailey and we move on to the next name on the list. But this is some, just a tool again to help us identify those guys that might be throwing new pitches that we could target that might be ready to take a big jump forward. So
Thanks for listening. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please jump on over to Twitter and like uh, or follow me on Twitter at SmartFantasyBB. And stay smart. Thank you.